I am beyond excited. I am overflowing. I am bubbling over. I need to learn how to edit these videos. Oh my gosh. I mean, for real, for real. I need to learn how to edit these videos. So I was starting the video. I got an amazing phone call. Um, I see God working and oh, 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 you all, we're in this season. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Just open your eyes and look around you and be watchful and see what's happening. And don't get caught up in the details. Look at the bigger picture. That's all I'm going to say to you. You know, you know what you know. You know every, uh, what's going on. That's all I'm going to say to you. I'm not going to say anything more. I'm just telling you there is a shifting that has occurred in this season. And the thing is, it didn't happen for me first. It didn't happen for me first. Um, or I didn't notice it with me first. Um, there was a friend of mine on Facebook and she did this post about families and, and I liked it and I'm like, okay, I received that and I shared it to my page. And then, and then today happened. <laughs> so, um, like I said, what I came here to share is because I, uh, am, in the process of doing some research for our new home. And in the process of doing that, I had pulled it up on my computer. See, I had pulled up, and that's not the actual home. That's just me pulling it up and getting ready to get started. This is an area that I usually go to to look at what homes or what houses are available. So I had pulled it up on my computer, and I had went through my desk and was getting ready to get a notebook out, and then I seen this paper here. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to use this paper. <coughs> And so I wrote at the top of the paper in search of our new home. And at the time, the Bible wasn't even on my mind, but I wrote that. And then as I was getting ready to go and look at the homes and write them down, I'm like, no, I want to put a blessing on this. I need God to direct my family to our new home because I know that, that when God is in it, when you, when you put God in whatever your situation is, it don't even have to be about a new home. It could be about a new job. It could be about a relationship. It could be about growth in whatever area. It could be whatever it is, whatever it is. You know, it could be a, something as simple as, you know, I need um, to find a hairstylist out here in Florida that I trust. You know, it could be, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. God is just that concerned about us. The scriptures say that he knows the very, how many strands of hair that we have on our head. He knows us so intimately. And like any loving parent, he wants to have an intimate relationship with us. So no matter what it is, don't let me define it. Whatever it is for you, you can go and you can ask God. It says, lean not unto your own own understandings. That's what the scriptures say. That's what he tells us. Lean not unto your own understandings, but in all your ways, in all of your ways, take note of him and he'll make your path straight. I know this to be true for myself. And so I'm sharing this because I also know that I'm not the only one that is doing the search and the process and, and the process of finding a home can be really long and it can be daunting and, and but it don't have to be. It don't have to be. And that's the part that I'm I'm sitting here with. It don't have to be. It don't have to be no struggle, no back and forth. When you put God in it, oh my gosh, when God is for you, who can be against you? God opens doors that no man can close and he closes doors now that no man can open. So that part there, when God closes a door that no man can open, why do I have to struggle if God closed it? then I don't need to be trying to open it. But when God opens it, can't nobody stop what's coming to me when God opens that door. Amen. <laughs> and that's the same thing for you. So what I did, like I said, I got my paper in search of the new homes and I sat down and I thought about it. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want to struggle. I don't want to uh, go in and have to walk and see a whole bunch of different, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this by myself. I need God's help. So I decided, okay, I'm going to look up some scriptures that has to do with moving. And, and I started remembering, you know, I was like, okay, God, you said 
that we will build houses, that you would show us the place where we were supposed to be and that we would be able to build. And so I went in and I found Isaiah 65. Well, actually, I found a couple of scriptures. There was one in Jeremiah 2, and I don't even know what that is now because I went straight to Isaiah. I was going to go back to Jeremiah. I was. I was. But I was, as a matter of fact, let's see. Do I have it on my computer? I don't have it on my computer, so I don't know where that scripture was, but I went to do the Isaiah first, and I was going to go back to Jeremiah. And so anyway, I got to Isaiah 65, and I read it. It says, they will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. Okay, and and see, I didn't go to the next one. I didn't go to those next verses, but I need to go there. But But I saw that, and I'm like, yes, yes. We can do this. We can settle down. We can begin to build now here. And so um, that scripture took me over to Isaiah 32, 18. And there it talked about we will live in peaceful dwellings and in secure homes and in undisturbed places of rest. We will live in peaceful dwellings, secure homes and undisturbed places of rest. And so I ended up writing that down and Everybody who knows me knows that I am a researcher. I get to digging and and that's just what I did. I got to digging. And so in the red is my research scriptures that I need to add to. And I did that first one, Isaiah 2, 4. And I'm like, oh, you know what I saw? I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I need to share this. And that's how I ended up doing a video. The first video, I hit it, it had got long, right? It had got really long and I had got a phone call. So I had to stop to take that phone call. And let me tell you, oh, the blessings that I saw, what God is doing. Oh my gosh. I'm not going to go into detail about that. I'm just saying God is doing it. He is doing it. And what's so crazy is that before I got that phone call, I had got redirected back to, because I wanted to make sure to do this right. Cause I didn't want to miss anything when it came to Isaiah. 2 4. So I went back to Isaiah 65, which is where I started, and I decided to read down. And then I started laughing because I got to verse number 24 24. And just what I was asking for, which is for God to step in and to direct me. Right now, all I really have to do is look at a lot of different houses. And so that's what I'm getting ready to do. And out of all these different lists and all these different emails that were sent to me, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to choose the ones that, that, you know, might fall into what we've because you know write the vision make it plain right so might fall into some of the things that we've said we wanted and i'm going to choose several ones and then from there i'm going to give that list to my husband we're going to go and of course look at the um look at the area and then from there um, once he get through doing uh his end of it and we get what we need then we're going to start calling about going and doing the walkthroughs but in the meantime, in the meantime, for this here part, I wanted to make sure because there's a lot of time that, that comes with that. And I wanted to make sure that I do it the way God wants me to do it and that I choose what God is dropping or directing me to and, and causing me to see and dropping into my spirit. Because I'm telling y'all. It don't have to be a long, drawn out promise. I know it don't. I know it don't. I believe that time when, when Abraham took Isaac up and, and God stopped him from sacrificing Isaac. And then there was a pastor, I can't remember who, but he taught on this. And he taught about how when God turned him, turned, opened his vision to see the ram caught in the bush, the ram was caught by his own. I, I'm thinking that it was Bishop Martin that was speaking this. I'm thinking that it was him. I'm not sure, but but anyway, I remember it, it being told that the, the ram was caught by his horns. And the horns are the strongest part of the ram. And so all Abraham had to do was go and slit the throat of the ram and, and kill it. He didn't have to struggle or nothing. I'm telling y'all, when it comes from the Lord, there is no struggle. All you got to do is believe. All you got to do is believe that he is, that God is, and that he will reward those who earnestly seek him. I believe now. I believe he is a rewarder. I got so many testimonies. I mean, brand new testimonies, okay? not I got some old testimonies, but I got some brand new right now testimonies about God working it, about God doing it. And so I believe. I have crazy faith. I believe. 
And so I went back to Isaiah 65 because I just wanted to make sure that I'm, I'm doing this right, right? So I continued reading. Verse 21 says, They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. You see, we like to garden. So in the other video that I did, I had went out and walked around and I saw some um, stream beans hanging from one of the plants. I saw some tomatoes hanging from another plant. So it says, No longer would they build houses and others live in them. And I got to thinking, okay, like we paying rent, we pay rent, we don't own, we pay rent. So as we live, continue to live here and we pay rent, the people who actually own this house, they getting rich off of us because we paying rent. We need to pay ourselves when we need to own. So anyway, um, go back here, 22, no longer will they build houses and others live in them or plants and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the works of their hands. They will not toil in vain or bear children doomed for misfortune. For they will be a people blessed by the Lord and they and their descendants with them. That's the, that's the blessings for my children, okay? We will be a people blessed by the Lord. It says, I got to read, I got to read verse 23 again. They will not toil in vain or bear children doomed for misfortune for they will be a people blessed by the Lord they and their descendants with them amen but here's what really caught me verse 24 before they call I will answer this is God speaking he said before they call I will answer while they are still speaking I will hear and that happened today because I had said I wanted God in it. I wanted his direction. My path is crooked, but when God is in it, he makes them crooked paths straight. I believe his word. I believe his word. So, and I got to thinking, okay, when we get to looking for homes and choosing homes, we look at like how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, is the roof good? Um, is the foundation good? Um, 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 you know, is there any chip paint? You know, is is the paint good? Is it not lead paint in there? You know how old is it? Those are things we're looking at. But you know what we forget to ask for? We we forget to ask that our dwelling place, that our home is in, a, in an area where there is peace, that our home is secure, that um our place where we we rest our heads, that it is undisturbed. We forget to ask for those things. Until after we move in and begin to move in and then we want to bless the house and ask for let me tell y'all those Israelites. This is another thing. I can't remember who, who taught this message. I think it was maybe TD Jakes on this one. I think I don't remember who, but I remember it dropped in my spirit that we need to praise on this side, not on the other side. See. On this side where I am now, I am looking to move. My family is looking to buy a home. We are looking to settle down and set roots here where we stay at. This is what we're looking for. I want to um, begin to praise God and ask God's blessings now. I don't want to wait until I cross that threshold, until I find that home and then move and then ask God. I do need to, Let me put it like this. I want God to direct me to where he wants me to be. I don't want to put myself in a place and then God ask God to bless my mess. Did y'all catch that? Did y'all catch that? I need, God says that he knows the plans he has for us, right? Plans to give us a future and hope. He knows the plans he has for us, right? I want God's direction. I want my footsteps ordered. I don't want to be religiously minded. And because I go to church or however, I forget at this step to honor God, to praise God, to ask his direction, to look up his word and to hear what thus says the Lord, what thus says the Lord in each of these steps. I don't want to miss that. I don't want to ignore all that. Go straight to looking at different houses, choose a house, move into a house. Cause see, we do that with jobs sometimes too. And we'd be like, the Lord gave us this. And then when we get, get in it and then all of a sudden it's chaos, you know, <laughs> because we was looking, but we didn't ask God first to show us, show me the way, <laughs> show me your way, Lord. Um, 
I'm just really excited. I'm really excited. And I'm trying to tone it down because now this video is becoming long. It really doesn't need to be that long. But what I'm saying is on this side, on this side to seek God. And he said in verse 24, and I'm holding on to that one. I'm, I didn't know that was there. <laughs> Isaiah 65, 24. It says, before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. What am I asking the Lord for? Because now I know he hears me. What am I asking for? I'm asking for him to show me. I'm asking for him to choose. Because when God is in it, it's, it's what it's supposed to be. It is, oh my gosh, he opens doors no man can close. When he blesses a matter, when the Lord is for me, who can be against me? He knows the desires of our heart. In Psalm, it talks about how he wants to give us the desires of our heart. He knows what's good for us. When he, know, I could, when he knows what's good for me, that means that sometimes he'll say to me, no. Because he knows down the line that something I might want might not be good for me. So I want God to help me because I don't want to have to struggle on nothing. I don't have to. Why would I even want to go through it if I don't have to? That's That's crazy. It's crazy. I know that there's some people that say, you know, well, you need to learn on your own. Well, let me tell you, I've had a lot of learning experiences on my own. And some of those experiences, many of those experiences, learning on my own, um, uh, uh, entailed a lot of pain, entailed a lot of suffering, entailed a lot of grief. And it hurt people, not just me, but other people too. I don't want to do that. I don't have to do that. I don't have to do that. Why would I take the long route to get to somewhere when I could take the easy route? And the easy route is by my being obedient and seeking the Lord first, not cutting corners, none of that, but, but really getting instruction, getting direction. Why would you go out and buy, uh, like, you know, from Walmart, when you buy, uh, that particle board, uh, Furniture from Walmart, you have to put it together, right? And so, um, why would I go and buy that and get directions, not follow the directions given and put it together myself, only to find out that I put something together wrong, so now I got to take it apart and read? Why would I go through all that when you could simply follow the directions and get it done the right way and quicker because you got it done the right way and didn't have to waste time taking stuff apart? You catch what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Um, I have learned to ask the Lord. I have learned to seek the Lord. I have learned obedience is learned through the things suffered. That is true. That is true. Through the things I have suffered a long time ago, I've learned to be obedient. So, and so I'm sharing this again because I'm telling y'all, I'm telling you all, I'm telling you all, uh, when you pay attention, when you pay attention, when you seek the Lord and when you ask him, no matter what is going on, no matter what the issue is, when you ask God, when you take that time out and ask God and you listen for him to direct you. Oh, my gosh. No struggle. You get it done. I didn't say no work. I said no struggle. I did not say no work. I said no struggle. You get it done and it's long lasting and the enjoyment again. They will build houses. Isaiah 65. And look, I wanted to come to you about Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4. And that new that was dropped in me as many times as I've read that verse. But let me stop with this Isaiah 65. Uh, 21 through 24, it says they will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them or plant vineyards and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will the days of my people, my chosen ones. So will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the works of their hands. They will not toil in vain or bear children doomed for misfortune. For they will be a people blessed by the Lord. They and their descendants with them. I'm claiming that one. Before they call, I will answer. While they're still speaking, I will hear. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. I should go to verse 25, but I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. They will call. Before they call, I will answer. 
while they're yet speaking, I will hear. I thank you, Lord. Oh my gosh. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. What time is it? It is 1033. And the blessings that have poured out on this day are ready. <laughs> I'm overflowing. I'm bubbling over. I ask that you catch it. I ask that you go back and, and look at those verses. If you're looking to get a home, if you're considering that, I ask that you stop. And I ask that you stop right now. Just stop. And go and seek the Lord. And and it's not too late. It's not too late. Stop and go and seek the Lord. Get the Lord to direct where he wants you to be. No matter what it is. If you're trying to buy a car. Same thing. If you're considering what college to go to. Same thing. If you're looking for a job. Same thing. Stop. Stop for a second. Stop. Just stop. And go seek the Lord. Ask the Lord to help you. And, and don't just pray and ask. Go to his word. Go to his word. Pull up Google. Father, what do you say? Well, don't say Father. But Google, what does the Bible say about jobs? You know, about working. About uh, what does the Bible say about um Resources. I want to say resources, but at the end of the day, prosperity. That's third John chapter one, verse two. Third John, it's only one chapter, but I have to say it that way so you know. Third John chapter one, verse two. Third John chapter one, verse two. <laughs> get you a, in other words, get you a scripture. Get you a scripture of what God's words say about whatever it is that you're trying to do, and hold on to that scripture and move forward. Move forward. Remember, God said His word will not return to Him without result. He said it. He promised in Jeremiah chapter one verse twelve. It says that He's keeping awake to fulfill His word. So, so get His word. Get his help on it. Ask him to help you. Ask him to, to show you the way that you are to go and follow. Do what he tell you to do. And watch them blessings come down. I can't wait to see which house he's going to direct me to. Oh my gosh. And I'm going to be so grateful because that house is going to be a peaceful dwelling place. Because that's what his word says. That, that we will live in peaceful dwelling places, in places, in secure homes, in undisturbed places of rest. The Lord is so good. Jesus said that whatever you ask for in his name, that the Father will give it to you. All you got to do is ask in the name of Jesus. I got to go about my day. But I now got to stop all of this and go and um, get this dinner started at 1033 in the morning, right? <laughs> okay.